What's up survival, it's Jason here. Today, I'm gonna to be practicing my friction fire testing. Now, this time, I'm actually gonna be trying the hand drill. Before, like probably like a year ago or something like that, I've been trying the bow drill. And I haven't really been getting that much success. The only thing I've been getting is smoke. But this time, I actually got a little bit of a little urge to actually come out and try another friction fire. So the reason for this is because a group called SALT, the, the study of ancient uh, life ways and technologies, actually came out to my work. And there's a little program that we had of a, like an archaeology type of program. And I actually got to uh, see them do a little friction fire by hand drill. So I got some little information from them and got various stuff from them. So I'm going to be practicing my hand drill skills right now. So. One thing I learned was trying to get just softwoods. I mean, just for the softwood, for the spindle, and the hoss board. So I'm going to be looking around, see if I could find any of those, and actually try to make a friction fire from a hand drill. So one of the woods they're mentioning was the wood from the ribs of a cactus. Now, just recently, I did make a little shelter, a natural shelter, and there are a ton of just little barrel cactus that were inside of there. They're kind of covered up with a bunch of brush and stuff like that. So I just threw them over here, and they kind of dried up right now. But since they're here, I might as well take a few of these and try to see if I could actually make this into a little spindle. So it seems a little bit damp, maybe. But right now, I think it should be good for a spindle. So I'm going to take a few of these and then try these out. So let's go on to the next piece of wood. So here is another possible candidate. I'm not quite sure exactly which plant this one is but it could be a rabbit brush or even a smaller cedar. But here are the leaves. It's like I think it's a little bit too thin for a cedar but there are a bunch of long and straight little pieces of wood. So I could definitely use that for a spindle. So I think I possibly found out what type of tree this is that I have my natural shelter on. And it could be a salt cedar. S-A-L-T cedar. So some of the pieces of bark, I do notice it is a little bit reddish. And I've found one of the uh, branches like that before and have tried it for a hand drill but never really got the uh, ember. But you can see that the uh, little leaves like this, and every once in a while it does have a kind of like a fibrous type of seed coming off of it. But I'm gonna try to find a piece of wood, a straight one from this tree as well. So another tree that would be great for a friction fire is the cottonwood tree. Now I've been informed that this makes a great little hearth board, but I've noticed a lot of the cottonwood trees are pretty tall. So I actually found this one, and this one is actually the one that I did my first outdoor cooking video. I was like right there, and then I grabbed a bunch of the wood to actually feed the fire right there. But this one seems uh, relatively easy to actually try to get a branch off of. Especially this one right here, and there's another one up here. So I could possibly reach those and try to saw them down to make a good little hearth board. But I've been told that the roots are a little bit better for making a hearth board, but I don't want to really kill the root system on this one. But uh, it looks a bit too small for it, but you never know. But yeah, let's try to get a good piece of wood off of this. So I'm going to try to cut halfway. That looks like the, probably the dead part on this tree because there's still a little bit of branches coming from this that look a little bit live, but let's see how far I can actually reach before I have to cut. Put some glasses on so it doesn't get poked in the eye. Oh, that's gonna be a big branch to fall. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna hurt if it falls on me. Yeah. Let's check this. There we go. Oh 
yeah, that's definitely dry. That's gonna make an awesome little hot board. I'm gonna make plenty of them as well. Oh yeah. Baco Laplander. You saw it right there. Look at that. That is the bark. That'll make an excellent little bird's nest. Sweet. So I'm back at home and it is the next morning because I just didn't want to deal with the bad lighting from the night and stuff like that. But I have all my materials and tools that I kind of could spread out, see what I have. So for the spindles, I have the salt cedar right here. I got a really long piece right here and kind of a shorter piece. I could probably use this one for a bow drill if I wanted to from that size. Then I think this one's like rabbit brush, but I think it is a softwood, so I want to try that. Then I have the barrel cactus ribs right there. And I've had this for a while. This is a yucca stalk. And I'm not sure even if it's going to be in a, any good to uh, use as a spindle because it's so old. So I'm going to be testing those out. Probably going to do the least to greatest effectiveness, I guess, I guess you could say. Then I have my cottonwood. I'm going to use these as the hearth board. A whole bunch of tender. This from the bark of the cottonwood tree. I my gloves. I got my little tobacco laplander. This helps a lot when I'm trying to get these pieces of wood. Then I have my knives. I'm going to try out four different knives. I'm going to try the Oppenel number eight. I'm going to try my Elk Ridge 088. My Tom Chitwood bushcraft knife. And then my Buck. 110 right there that I got from my birthday. And then, of course, I gotta have some type of hacksaw because if I tried to uh, cut this hand drill just with this, it's gonna fracture a lot. So having something a little bit more of a precision type of blade can definitely help and bring out those little flat pieces on there. So there's various stuff I gotta do around here and just kind of test a whole bunch of stuff and see what works and what doesn't. So I'm going to clean these up and try to get a good hand drill fire. So here is my little setup. I have my hearth board on top of this microfiber cloth. This is to just get it off the ground and because it's a little bit cold. Then I have my little cold catch, just a little piece of leather. Then I have my piece to actually hold this all down so it doesn't move. So this is just a little piece from the cottonwood. I couldn't cut that down because of the knot. But once I put it on here and actually step on it, it, it works really good for keeping it kind of stationary. So I'll probably use that for there and then just kind of use the spindle from there. And hopefully I'll get a fire going. So I'm just use the yucca first and then just go on from there. So I'm just going to use the elk ridge to make a good little hole. And that just works perfectly for making that little hole. So I'm going to do the first burn on here. Alright, I'm going to be trying the bow drill for a little bit. See if I can actually get a little bit more smoke. What I'm getting from the... I'm not even getting any smoke from the hand drill. That's gonna work. I think that's definitely gonna work right there. All right, let's cut the notch.
So it's been about a week since last time that I tried this, and I had to get some things in order and get some ideas to try to uh, fix what are the problems that I'm having with, and that was with the friction of the bearing block in my string. So I remembered probably like around Christmas last year, I got a Christmas box, and inside that Christmas box, I got a little fidget spinner. Now, in that video for Jimmy Slash that I made for the Pithmas video, I mentioned that I would use this for a bearing block. So I went ahead, took a little tool, and then popped off this little button that's on top of this. And you can see right there, there is a little bearing inside of there. This would reduce a lot of the friction that's happening and allow me to move it freely without any snags, hopefully. And then I went ahead and got myself some twisted mason line right here and I got a better, hopefully better, string to actually get enough grip to actually move the spindle. So I'm going to be trying that out today and hopefully I could get a better fire. You see that? I got a call. I finally got a call. Oh yeah, I don't know how much you saw that, <laughs> look at that, oh yeah, I finally got a fire by friction. Now the thing that really helped out a lot was probably the cordage and the little fidget spinner. This reduced a lot of the friction that was happening, at first I was trying this little bearing block that was a rock that I got from Jerry Pruitt and it kind of wore down the uh, the tip a lot and it was caught, caused a lot of friction then I tried this piece of fat wood eventually it kind of dried up in a spot and started burning in so it kind of worked for a good moment there but eventually it just kind of run dry because it just kind of uh, gets stuck on there and starts uh, causing a lot of friction but then finally, when I got the fidget spinner out, this worked amazingly. So if you happen to have a fidget spinner, or maybe just buy one, you could probably possibly get a friction fire with a bow drill. And then the right type of knife, I believe, the one I keep going back to is possibly the Buck 110 and the Elk Ridge uh, 088. Now this one, helps out a lot for making that initial little hole on the hearthboard 
and then it's not as good for making the little notch but eventually you can get it done but also when I do the notches this works out really well just it gets in there really good and definitely a clean cut in there so it's probably in between these two knives I'll probably recommend but then the Oppenel kind of works for a uh, fine work I guess you could say so probably getting the tip of the spindles all cleaned up and all that so it definitely works out for that but not really good for the hearth board it might be a little bit too thin for the hearth board stuff but then this <laughs> the big chunk of the bushcraft knife this helped out a lot removing a lot of the shavings from the yucca stock this helped out a lot for removing all of that but everything else it was decent but I think possibly just gonna stick with the buck 110 I think that's probably the my best one that I've been working with then the type of wood for a good moment the salt cedar kind of worked out really good and then I kind of had to uh, replace the uh, from the hand drill one and then because this one got really small then I just kind of cut up this part right here so I could use more of it but I kind of shaved down the bark on there because I don't know if this one's going to be a good stick anymore because I don't know what happened to that one but it seemed to be working with this one. Then I tried the barrel cactus little um, rib and that worked out pretty good and decently right there but I finally got it with the, so no, the yucca stalk right there. So yucca stalk and cottonwood. Those are the combinations that really helped out a lot and finally got my ember on for a friction fire. So I'm definitely going to be practicing this a lot more and hopefully I can get myself some actual bank line instead of this mason line. This kind of snapped quite a bit and I have a little pile right here of all the pieces that I had to take off and put back on and stuff like that. But other than that, I think that is a success and a well done right there so hopefully you got something out of this i definitely learned quite a bit especially it's the notch and the wood together that really kind of uh all come together but then having the frictionless type of uh bearing block really helped and having the right type of cordage to keep it uh, going and spinning all together instead of slipping that was one of my problems for quite a while and I finally got this type of line, kind of like a smaller line, but actually stayed on really good. So that is it for this video. I'm definitely going to be practicing a lot. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.